Good morning, everybody. We are back once again, May 17th, 2018. It is 618 a.m. Current temperatures for this morning, as always. We are in uh, high to mid-50s in the northeast, but a lot of saturation going on. It is pouring outside my window right now. Uh, still going into work today. We have a lot of lightning um, groupings going on, basically from Iowa straight across to the Great Lakes, down through Florida, still getting saturated. Um, in fact, let's look at it. Why not? I have the chart up. Let's look at it together. Um, again, once, anytime you see these rings, that is a live lightning strike as we speak. There are sensors all over the country that pick these up. They put the data together, and then we could sit here and watch this chart. So once again, over the last 5, 10, 15 years, the technology that we are allowed to use here to do these weather reports is incredible. Um, it makes things very easy for a lot of people. If you can understand these charts, you can do any of this stuff. So for those of you that are trying to start a channel or want to or, uh, uh, specifically talk about weather and stuff like this, these charts, it doesn't get easier than this, guys. You can match these charts. You can learn things on your own. Um, very, very good tool here with this lightning. It tells you where the severe part of these storms usually are. Sometimes you get, you know, dry lightning. It happens, but usually see it spotty like that. Anyway, the point of this video is I want to um, um, acknowledge some of the people that have been telling me to stop using the GFS model. Uh, we're going to switch over to the FV3 uh, GFS model, um, which actually shows a little bit worse news than the GFS. So let's take a look at it. So this is our FV3 GFS. You can get it to it just by going to the global tab in the tropical tidbits area. Here is GFS. Now we're going to go through both of these. And by the time we reach about the 30th of May, we have a situation going on that could affect Texas in a um, very familiar way, if you guys know what I'm saying. Um, Hint, hint, Harvey. Anyway, so here's the GFS run, which people have been not sort of criticizing me, but telling me is total junk. So it shows this tropical wave coming up around May 25th. That's about six days away from now. Um, and it wants to come over Cuba and then over the east coast of Florida. Uh, not too bad. Nothing super crazy. That little whip into Florida will be very significant. That will affect Georgia and Atlanta going into May 27th. And then this wants to ride up the East Coast and then check this out. This is pretty significant. This would be like a nor'easter, uh, very, very wet, windy, uh, possibly coastal damaging situation if this low pressure does end up coming this way. But when we switch this over to what people have been telling me to use on Instagram, uh, Twitter, I'll be getting messages from all over the place, the FV3 GFS model, this thing puts an all-out strong, significant hurricane right through the heart of Texas by May 31st. And let's see where this thing originates from. The um, origin of this storm um, basically is the same as the GFS. But as we can clearly see, this does not go over Cuba. This shoots the gap just like Nate did, Hurricane Nate from last year, which means this thing will gain strength the entire way up towards Louisiana and Texas. And then as we move into the 26th, which is literally nine days away, guys, so as we get closer to the dates on these charts, you can be more and more certain that things like this may happen. And we are total, we're talking full-blown hurricane right now, 980 um, as the pressure and then this thing gets very strong. And then we talk about 972 pressure. We drop to 969 at one point, right there. You can see 969. And then we have a dead on hit to Texas on May 31st, going, ooh, excuse me, going into June 1st. June 1st, we are um, basically landfall city with 969 pressure right into the heart of Texas. So. There you have it, guys. A lot of people have been telling me that the GFS model is not something to rely on anymore. Um, I agree and I disagree because the GFS has been dead on with some, some of the things we've been talking about, especially the winter storm season we had. The GFS was my go-to. I would switch to the CMC and the European model here and there to get to compare and contrast, but for the most part, that's what we're dealing with. So I just wanted to take some time and show you guys the difference here and that the FV3 GFS model is showing an all-out hurricane blasting right into Texas by May 29th, May 30th. That is a little bit of ways away, so we can have some movement within that. But when they're this certain on a hurricane forming and hitting land, uh, that's cer certainly something to watch. So uh, sorry for the short video today. Got to get to work, guys. We still have volcanoes going all over the place on the big island in Hawaii. 
Um, lots of stuff going on. We had flash flooding and severe flooding events going on in southern Pennsylvania, down into West Virginia, Virginia, and then stretching over to Long Island as the day goes on. This is all our moisture. I'm not going to play it now. I just don't have the time. And then we have a tropical wave here. This is the GFS version. Like I said, this is where the GFS has that storm. And then the FV3 GFS has that storm coming right into the Gulf, getting stronger as it goes right into Houston, guys. So keep an eye on this. We'll talk about it. We'll be back this afternoon. Have a wonderful morning, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.